Hello, 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 hello. What's going on, nation? We'll let people file in here. Dun, 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 dun. Hopefully everybody is doing good. Wait, hold on. Comments. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna go over go over these game notes. Let me pull up. Okay, yeah, let me see this. Okay. J Dub, hello, Matthew. What's up, brother? Matthew is from my hometown in Saginaw, close friend of mine. War Productions, what's going on? Jonathan Lamelli, Andrew Ahmad, LC, doing good, doing good, doing good, 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 good. Yeah, we'll talk about this. Talk about this game. Actually, I just watched uh, uh, um, a kid I used to train um, from from my middle school and high school. Brian Cole played at Mississippi State. Played for the Vikings, the Dolphins. Actually, he just played in the Grey Cup, and unfortunately, he was with Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and they paid they played Montreal Alouettes, and they ended up losing in the last couple of seconds. So that was kind of a bummer. And then with the Raiders game, you know. Sean Johnson, what's going on, brother? Eric Jones, yes. We'll wait a couple more minutes here, let people file in. And then uh, what's up, Jamal? And then we'll get we'll get going here. Uh, King Chadwick, Mike Weston. Oh, I want to give a big shout out to my man. Um, hold on. Let me. Where are the pictures at? My man Tartan Raider for repping the thirty jersey down there in Miami. Yeah, let me let me shoot these pictures up to the computer. Flying in from Scotland. And he went to this game, and he'll be going to the game uh, this weekend in Las Vegas. Yeah, let me pull, pull these up. Da, 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 da. Here, hold on. Let me go. Boom. Open and then open and then open. Is that it? Oh, I guess there's one more. There we go. Yeah, here we go. Here goes Tartan. There he is at the game, rock, rocking that 30 with. I'm not sure what Raider guy this is, but he's pretty decked out. Sexy fish. That's him and his, his beautiful wife. Very, very cool people. I'm going to give a big shout out to them. Always, always got the good support. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, I just jumped from Captain Show. Okay, cool. Uh, hey, what's going on? Appreciate you pulling up. Uh, Raiders defense stood up today. Offense needs to catch up. Follow suit. Miami was averaging 31. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, crazy how we should have won this game. Yeah. Yeah. That. All right. Well, let me, let me, I'm going to go through here. Um, you know, he, you know, obviously, you know, you talk about the Raiders and, you know, four weeks ago, do we think we're going to win any games the rest of the season? No. Um, 
Was this a game that we thought we could win? Probably not. Uh, was it a game that we could have won? Yes. But if you look at this remaining schedule, this was a game, if we won it, it was a bonus, to be honest with you. To go down on the road in Miami, facing a team who who had a bye week, so they had two weeks to prepare for us. The players had Wednesday to Sunday off of the week prior, so they were rested up and ready to go. And uh, there were there were some play callings uh, that were questionable. Um, Aiden made some decisions I haven't seen him make in probably five years. Um, but again, it's a veteran defense. You know, I don't like the reverse plays. I don't think we need that. Um, I didn't like all the look passes that we threw. I think, you know, to Devontae Adams, to Renfro. I mean, their their defense is too good. Their their corners are too good, and especially with them playing those hard cover two corners. That that's that's their play to make because they know they have safety help over top. So I didn't like those. Uh, but defense, you know, creating three turnovers but only getting six points out of it, it's not what you want. Not what you want at all. Um, the one thing I talked about, you know, some of the stuff I said that we're going to need to do to win this game was uh, gang tackle, which I thought we did. I said our safeties are really going to need to come down and play those alleys of when those running backs – get to the edge, which they were trying to do. And I thought Epps and Moreg did a good job of that. Uh, Powell Mayo, um, I thought he had a breakout game. He had some very, very good tackles. I mean, you know, the tackle on that fourth and one on Tyree Kill where, you know, Hobbs comes up, he's got him wrapped up, and Powell Mayo comes up and makes the tackle. There was another play, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to it, but where he's playing deep half safety on the right side, and they throw it to the left, and he runs all the way across the field to make a tackle. Um uh, number 59, the, the the linebacker who came in, I thought played great. Uh, Spillane played great. And, and again, with, with um, uh, oh God, Diablo, you're asking a guy to play middle linebacker that's really a safety at 6'3", 223. He's a safety. He played safety at Virginia Tech. I mean, to put him in the middle, that's why he's having so many injuries. I mean, he's not his body's not built for that. So he's playing on a position. I just I don't think that's fair for him. Um, you know, and then you look at, and I said this, they, they get the ball out fast. Miami gets the ball out very fast and they let their ball carriers, whether it's Mostert or their running backs or, or Hill or whoever, they get it out quick and let them, uh, get yardage, get yak. And we knew it was going to be a struggle to get to them, regardless of how fast our rush is, it's going to be tough. And one of the stats that I found that went along with that was here. Hold on. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, Tua gets the ball out on average two point in two point four seconds. Fastest in the NFL, two point four seconds on average. That ball is gone. And again, that, that's just tough as a defensive line to create any pressure. It, it's you gotta you gotta make sure your eyes are locked on because they they run very. I mean, they run a very fast offense. Um, here, let me let me just see. Uh, thanks everybody for pulling. We have forty five people in here. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Andy, tough team you went against. I'm sure everyone says Aiden isn't the guy. Remind them how many interceptions Peyton Manning had as a rookie. Absolutely, 28 led the NFL, and and a, a, as a as a uh, starter that year, they went three and uh, 13. So, just to put things in perspective here, um, let's see. Yep, thank you, Matthew. Um, Miami changed their defense looks after the second half that they didn't use before the penalty on Bennett that lit. Yes, that was BS. And that, that was a huge, that was a huge play. I mean, cause up to that point, their offense wasn't doing anything and they call, you know, it's a third down. They called holding, which I thought was bullshit. And then that was the drive where they ended up scoring, which was a huge momentum burst for their offense. So yeah, it was, it was a very big penalty, very big penalty. Um, 
but here you, you look at it. I'm just going to go through my notes here and you, I'm, I'm going to go through the comments probably after I'm done here. Um, but keep, keep talking amongst each other. But you look at the, the you look at the, the Miami defense and they, they have a good defense, a, a very veteran defense. Uh, but Vic Vangio, the defensive coordinator coming into this game, their rushing defense was 13th in the NFL. Their pass defense was 13 in the NFL and their total defense was 12. So, I mean, they're not the Baltimore Ravens defense, but they have a good defense. They have, they have a defense that's going to be sound. Um, they're going to make you go the long, hard way to, to score. They're going to capitalize on your mistakes. And that's what we saw today. Um, I thank God that they didn't, that, that first, you know, mayor fumble. I'm glad that that call got reversed. Uh, but again, I talked about the, the divine Diablo, you know, suffering some in injuries. And, and I thought Masterson came in and played great. He had that punch out that, that fumble, which was huge. But again, you know, Diablo 6'3, 223. He's a safety. Um, yeah, M Masterson forced fumble on Tua, which was great. Um, third fumble recovery of the season. H here's the one thing though, is our th our third down, our third down percentage on offense is bad. Is bad. Um, coming into the game, we were 33.1% on third down and 29th in the NFL. And third down is such a critical, critical down. But here, here's the thing that you don't, people don't realize in third down, you have to look at what we did on first and second down. You know, a lot of times, you know, third down is dictated on, on first down. We got to win first down. We got to focus on first down, not having negative plays. And we had a lot of negative plays on first down penalties. So we're in third and longs, right? We want third and shorts. Um, I didn't, there, there was a call where they, they said it was a pick route. I didn't think it was a pick route on mayor. It was a pretty weak call down there. Um, and one thing with the Raiders, we've been doing really well the last two weeks, four penalties in two games the last two weeks. So we were, we were a team that was, wasn't committing a whole lot of penalties at all. And again, I, we kept throwing those look passes and I thought on that second and 15 in the first quarter, that look pass to Devante, uh, where he got, you know, it was a tackle for loss. Um, I thought they were testing Adams to see, all right, is he going to jump this? And later on the, you know, the fake look and go is what I thought they were setting up. Cause a lot of times teams, they'll run some plays and get negative yardage just to see how the defense reacts to later on set them up. And I thought that was a play that later on you'd see us run the pump and go. And we, we kind of did run a pump and then like a in route, but, and they, I think they had a pass breakup on that, but um, yeah, Masterson forcing two fumbles. Yeah, that's huge. That is huge, 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 huge. Yeah, yeah. It's tough to win games when. Let's see how, how let's see how that matches up on our on our on our normal. Again, we were coming in at thirty three point one percent on third down. Um. What does that put us at here? All right. Let's see. Uh, we were what? Three. Yeah, 23%. So we were below our average of third down. 23. It's, I mean, to even, uh, to be in the game in the fourth quarter at 23% at, at on third down is, is kind of mind-blowing. But that's because we had three turnovers. Turnovers will keep you in the game. Um, you know, again, I, I talk about, you know, um, our, our special teams, I think, are really good. That's another thing that's keeping us in games. Carlson, he's 44 consecutive field goals. I think he hit the 45th within 40 yards. I mean, that's that's so crucial to have a kicker like that, which – goes into later on where I think we should kick the field goal instead of going for it on fourth down. And especially fourth down when I see the play that they drew up, didn't make any sense to me. 
Um, you, you, I think you get those points when you can. And then if you have to go for it at the end of the game, you do it. I don't think it was that time to do it. I mean, I get you're on the road and you know, you're, you're trying to make a statement, but get the points when you can on a, on a, on a team like Miami. And again, you, you know, I talked about Tua, you know, Tua getting the ball off at 2.4 seconds average. Um, and again, you go to Max Crosby and th this was kind of a cool stat. I saw um, quickest pass rush get offs, minimum 600 snaps since 2021. The fastest is Miles Garrett from the Browns at 0.71 seconds. Uh, Josh Sweat for the Eagles, 0.75 seconds. Trey Hendrickson for the Bengals, which I was surprised at this, 0.76. And then Max Crosby at 0.78. So even with that get off, it's still hard to get there. Uh, but I thought Spillane came up and I thought Spillane had some really nice tackles, especially on Mostert. Raiders defense on third down. So we talked about the offense struggles, 29th in the NFL. Raiders defense, 43.2%, 27th in the NFL on third down. Um, yeah, Bennett, that, that was it, that third down. Coons has the sack. We're off the field, and then they they give the holding call on Bennett. And I I I I I really believe. I mean, I, I just saw the back end of it, but I think the sack had already occurred before he even grabbed the guy. So it was a it was a it was a weak 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 call. And then on that touchdown, you know, Peters. I here was the game plan too. I thought like if we're gonna do well, make them make them throw those short routes right. Play off. Had some help over top, but they played a little too far off on that first touchdown. I mean, they were way, way, way back, and he caught that ball and just – he was untouched. And I, I thought they played too deep on that. little too deep on that. Peters needs to be able to, to get on him a little bit harder. You know, they scored with, you know, 203 in the first quarter. Tua Tungalova, you know, leading the NFL in passing touchdowns with 20, and that was Hill's 19th. And Hill, obviously, as you can see, man, he is a special, special player. Leads the NFL in yards after catch. Um, and actually, on that play, Moreg took a terrible angle. You know, he he's one thing about Moreg. I think he is playing better this year, but his eyes, his he needs to get better with his eyes. And we know he has the physical abilities, but his eyes, he gets he gets in trouble with his eyes. He looks at the quarterback too long. He's on that play there, you know, he he's making his break and he doesn't check to see where it what his entry angle is on the receiver. You when you break, you should plant and point and see that receiver because that's going to dictate your angle to that guy. Instead, he breaks, he's still looking at the quarterback, and he goes too flat, and he catches it right under here, and he tries to make the tackle. But if he would have took a sharper angle and took a look at Tyreek Hill, he, he would have had a better angle in there on that play. So, yeah, I, bad eyes, bad eyes, bad eyes. <clears throat> Our short yarders, I don't like. There was a great, you know, in the first quarter, there was a great cutback uh, by Jacobs to get the first down. Uh, the touchdown to, you know, Aiden to Adams, 46-yard touchdown. Uh, fourth touchdown to, Ad get this. That's the first touchdown Adams has had since week three. And really, it was a, it was a crossing route, which takes a long time to develop. So there was good blocking by the offensive line, and really, he was triple covered. And he still got behind those guys. Great throw, great catch. Uh, four plays, seventy-two yards. I thought it was a it, it, it was a great way to answer that first touchdown by Miami to come out in four plays and get down there and score. One one of the other stats I saw, and this was in the second quarter. They talked about Pearson, you know, 
as far as interim coaches to go 2-0, uh, you had Larry Watson for the Cardinals back in 1979, Art Shell in 1989, Gary Moeller, which Andy, you'll know that name, um, 2000 Lions, um, Garrett for the Dallas Cowboys, is it Justin or – in 2010, Leslie Frazier for the Vikings in 2010. Dan Campbell, who is now the, the, the Lions head coach, when he was the interim coach for the Dolphins in 2015, they went 2-0. Uh, and, and Rick Bisaccia with Las Vegas in 2021. So I, I want to see us keep AP. I want us to I want to see us keep AP. Uh let's see. Yeah, okay. Moreg again. Um, on third and eight, there was a play where they threw it to Hill, and he had the curl flat drop, and he 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 jumped the guy in front of him, and he should have got more depth. He should have got more depth. And we see later on in the game, uh, Palmeo, he, he does a great job on getting depth playing underneath with a corner over top of Hill on a third down and get the ball back. They don't convert. Yeah, Tyree Wilson and I, I we got I gotta see something out of this kid. I, I really do. I gotta see something out of this guy. You know, he had that terrible face mask call where he's just reaching his hand in there and I mean I'd like to see what his get off is because he's he just seems so lethargic and slow compared to those four guys I, I mentioned earlier. That's why I think he's a D tackle. I think he's an interior lineman, but because of Chandler Jones and what he did, we don't have that opportunity to move him in. We need him on the edge. But uh number 51, I thought when he was in there on the edge, he 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 brought some pressure, man. I thought he played really well. Well, and then and then too, I thought our red zone defense, which was always a struggle, or was our red zone offense always a struggle? I know we struggled in the red zone, but the Miami Dolphins were number one as far as touchdowns in the red zone. Um, out of thirty-two trips to the red zone, they scored twenty-four touchdowns. I have to look and see what today's game was, but I think I think we did pretty good with with holding them to field goals. Oh, yeah. Well, they go for it on fourth and one on, what, the five-yard line? And they throw that quick, again, that quick look pass to get it to Tyreek Hill. And Hobbs came up. I think he beat a blocker, and he's wrapping him up. And then um, Talmeo comes up and, and finishes him off. I mean, a great, great play. Great play on fourth and one to hold them to zero points. Thank you, everybody. We have 69. 69, baby. People in here. Yeah, I, I you know, second quarter, I said that look passes, they don't look they don't work against the dolphins. I think we ran that way too many times. I didn't I didn't like those. I didn't like those. Um God, I, I will say this, man. I mean, Tyreek, you know, he's got 1,222 yards, I think I looked up, nine nine touchdowns. Uh, the first receiver to, to get to 1,000 yards, I think, in eight games in, in the history. And will be the first receiver to probably get 2,000 yards. Um, I looked, I think the closest was Kelvin Johnson was 1,963, I think he had, in 2012. But no receivers ever caught for 2,000 yards in a season. And, and Ty, Tyreek Hill's on, on, on pace to do that. Again, I have I have Palmeo, nice tackle, sixty nine, great pressure. And here's the other thing I said. Um, I said I don't I don't want us to be in zero coverage, right? No help, zero coverage because it's just too hard one on one, and they get rid of the ball so fast. 
that blitz is probably not going to get there. And we ran, we ran a zero coverage blitz in the red zone. And they ran that angle route. It was actually, I mean, here, I'll draw it up. It was a very, very, very good play by Miami. Very, very tough offensive play to stop. Um, they're well coached. They really are. They're very well coached. Um, here, let me. Let me draw it up here. And thanks, everyone. 76 people in here. I appreciate you guys all being in here. No, why am I doing it this way? Fucking idiot. Hold on. Forgive me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And again, I appreciate all the messages in here, guys. Um, I'll go through and take a look. Well, no, it doesn't matter. This is a fucking square. Jesus Christ, Stuart. Fucking idiot. Okay. Okay. It was in the second quarter, the touchdown I'm talking about. With about, I think, a minute to go, they scored. Yeah, so So it's right here. So you have you have Spillane and Morag blitzing and zero cover so there's no help. So everybody should be inside and what they ran is a <laughs> We used to call it the Norv route or the the, the, the the angle route. Running back comes over here, comes in, and, and I've never seen it. So that's right here. So he uh, – Diablo has him, but he's coming to the flat really quick. So he's got to get over there, and then they stop and come back in. Or come back in. And not only did – do they do that? But they release the center. So you have the center coming out. And, and once the ball is thrown, it's not considered an offensive lineman downfield or a pick block. But you have you they had the center come out and actually block Diablo. Great, great play. Hard to stop. And they scored on it. Really, really, really good play. But I talked about, I don't like this. I said, we one thing we don't want to be in is zero coverage. Zero coverage with no help. And they go into zero coverage with no help and they get a touchdown. But you know, you don't, know, guys, you know my you know my um my saying, what the fuck do I know? I'm just some asshole in the basement. So, anyways, that was it. That was a very good, very good play. Very good play. Tough to stop. Then, then great, right? The force fumble. Hobbs forcing the fumble. Diablo recovery. 
We had we had two fumble recoveries in the first nine games, and we had two in the first half. And that kept us in it. That kept us in it. I love it. Game tackling, guys getting to the ball, guys. And, and here again, this is this is AP. This is back to the fundamentals of football. First guy in wraps up, second guy goes in and strips it, and that's what we were doing. Now we're in the third quarter, and Paul Mile, like I said, he had a breakout game. It was our eighth pick of the year, uh, the third turnover of the game. Great play, great play. And then we talk about special teams, and 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 here's a here are, I think guys that get overlooked is, you know, we have the number one punter in the NFL. I've got to assume Carlson's up there. But our, our, our punter is, is number one in the NFL because we have guys who are covering it, a guy like Abdullah who leads the team in special teams tackles. You know, a, a great addition for us, a great, great addition. Well, not an addition. I mean, he's been with us for a while. But those are guys that kind of get overlooked and how important it is to have those cover guys. You know, you look at the first three games of the season this year, our defense had zero turnovers. Th first three games, zero turnovers. And at this point, it was halfway through the, the game, seven and a half games. We have 14 turnovers. That's huge, man. That is fucking huge. That's the reason why we're winning games and why we're in the game in the fourth quarter. Oh, here, here you go. Check this stat out. In the first half, with quick passes by Tua. Again, we talked about how fast, you know, two point, whatever I said, four seconds or whatever, getting the average, getting the ball out. With quick passes, he was, and this is the first half, he was 18 of 20 for 175 yards, two touchdowns. He was getting the ball out in 1.91 seconds. 1.91 seconds. That is getting that motherfucker out quick. Man. And then you look at the first half. Again, Tyreek Hill, 111 yards. The rest of the team, 122 and here's a guy you know, even knowing he is the, the, the guy, he's still so hard to guard because they and, – and that's that's what's good about the Miami coach and the offensive coordinator is, is they are taking his ability and they are putting it into their offense rather than these, these fucking dumbass coaches who, oh, this is my system and if he doesn't fit in my system, I can't use him. Well, that's fucking stupid. That is fucking stupid. You take the guys you have – and you, you find out what they're good at and you maximize their talents and what they're not good at. You don't, you don't make them do. So what Tyreek Hill is good at, get him the ball early and let him work. And he's, he's tough to guard again. First half, 18 of 20, 175 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, 1.91 seconds. He's getting that ball out. Here was another. Here was another stat that I that I love. That's one reason I like watching the live. The live is because you can you can you can really hear some. I mean, the NFL does such great research. I mean, statistics are. They're, gosh, there are, and they play a huge part in the game. Statistics play a huge, huge part in the game. A huge part in the game. And um, yeah, the Dolphins undefeated at home. And we had them on the ropes. Couldn't land a knockout blow. You're right. You want to have a chance at the end? Because here's the deal. Those, those close games that we're just not able to finish now, we're going to get there, guys. Trust me. We're, we're, that, that's, a, that's a learned thing to know, hey, you know what? This game is close. We're going to win this thing. It takes a little bit. We're going to win those games. We're going to win those games. Yeah, bad bad egos with these coaches, man. They're so fucking stupid. Uh, Stu, in the third quarter, the Dolphins had the ball for a left. Yeah, see, that you bring up a great thing. And, and here's the other thing. <laughs> that, that's funny you said that. We must be on the same wavelength right now because this whole season we've only had one touchdown in the third quarter. It's not good. There's something, there's something going on at halftime that we're not coming out and, and that halftime kills us for whatever reason. One touchdown in the third quarter. 
Ooh, it's tough to win games like that. Oh yeah, here here was a great stat and a reason um, Crosby is such a good player. You know, I I, I always talk about this. Um, practice is so important in the NFL. You know, when I when I talked about you know Stu, how do you feel about this team? And I can only give such a minimal um, such a minimal opinion on on the team. By just watching the game. For me to get a full opinion on what's going on, I'd have to be out there for a week and, and watch practice and see how guys practice and see how guys watch film and see how they work out and see how the coaches react to bad plays in practice. Are they getting corrected? See how the scout team performs. See how hard guys are going in practice. Because here was the deal for me. I wanted to put myself under duress during practice. So I would – I you know – I would make myself uncomfortable during practice. I mean, I would I would wear sweat, you know, sweat after sweat. So I'm out there, I'm hot, I'm running full speed. Um, because again, you you have to do the you have to like running to the ball and and stripping the ball and and doing these things, it, it it's not it's not second nature. It, it takes a coach saying, get to the ball, get to the ball every play, get to the ball every play, get to the ball every play, strip, rip. Pass breakups aren't good enough. You know, what's the down and distance? What's the personnel grouping? Every play you do this. Every play you say this. But coaches get lazy and they stop doing that. But if you're not going hard every play in practice, it's very rare you're going to do it in the game. And here's the deal. The more you run and the more you do that in practice, it's just it, – it's easier in the game. So you look at Max Crosby, and this this was this was, this was was great. <clears throat> They talked about, you know, three of the four of the top DNs in the NFL. Max Crosby is in there 98% of the snaps, which is almost unheard of for a D lineman. 98% of the snaps, he is out there. Harrison Phillips of Minnesota is the next at 89.9%. So Crosby is almost 10% more than the next guy. Aiden Hutchinson for the Lions, 88.6% of the plays. Jeffrey Simmons from the Titans, 86% of the plays. And here's what they said. They said when they, I don't know if they talked to him or the coach, but they said he, he practices that way. He's never out in practice. And that, again, I, I wanted every rep in practice. I wanted I, I wanted to be tired at practice to know how to you know because here's the deal when you're when you're when you're running around your blood is going to all your extremities it leaves your brain so your brain it, it, it's hard to think when you're tired right so you train your body your brain to think while it is tired the only way you can do that is if you go hard in practice and Crosby does it and that's why he goes so hard in the game. And again, I, I just knew this, you know, my, my whole deal was if you consider yourself the fucking guy of that team, the man, the best player, the leader, is your team as good as it should be when you're off? No. So never go off the field. Stay out. My, you have, for me, I wasn't coming out for anything. You practice so much and go through so much bullshit in the off season and, you know, the workouts and the, the film and all this stuff to get out there to get, what, 50 to 70 chances to show what you can do. There's no way in hell you're going to take me out. No way in hell. No way in hell. And I practice that way. And Max Crosby practices that way. That's why he's in there 98% of the snaps. That, that, that may be probably higher than shit, not just D lineman, but a lot of positions. <laughs> yes, that's that's very true. That's very true. That's very true. And again, you know, the whole and I love Allen Iverson, but again, it shows you how different football is compared to the other professional sports. It's it's the greatest team sport in the world. Um 
I don't think practice shit. The NBA, there's some games where it doesn't matter to them. In the NFL, every fucking play could be the difference between your season being a winning season or a losing season. I mean, every single fucking play matters. That's why it's so great. That's why the stress is so high. That's why so many players when they're done playing are so fucked up because they are so used to being under that pressure. Third game for the coach, third game for AOC, fourth game for rookie QB. We just got to figure out how to move the chains and score points. And we'll, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Well, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Let's see. Where am I at here? Oh, yeah, and that third quarter, Spillane made a great play on that third down. And you can see he read that quarterback the whole way, and that's what his – for him being in that middle position there, he's just there to read the quarterback, and he made a great play. And just a little out of reach, but great play. And again, held them to a field goal. Um, The flea flicker, eh. Here, here's the thing, though, guys. You, you, that to me seemed like a play you fucking they kind of pulled out of their ass. For a flea flicker to work, you have to be running the ball, right? You have to be a team that is that is producing running yardage, and we weren't. We weren't able to run the ball. So the the Miami secondary they're not going to fucking come up on a run because. The front seven are, are are able to stop the run. They've been doing it all game. So why would they why would they come up now? Now, if we had been running the ball and they were having a hard time stopping us, that's when you run the flea flicker. Because that's when the, the those safeties are coming up a little bit. Those linebackers are moving up. But if there's no threat of run, which there wasn't, they're not gonna bite on that. You know, and I, I know Devontae had a chance for it and it was overthrown. But but again, even if he catches it, guys, it was a holding penalty by the offensive line. I mean, it was a and, – and Aiden had to get rid of it faster than he should have, but it was a holding penalty. So regardless if he catches it or not, we, that play doesn't work anyways. But again, you know, um, I have Paul, Paul Mayo, great tackle. Um, yeah, more egg on that fucking – he had that pass interference on the tight end because, again, he's looking at the quarterback. He's not even seeing what's going on over here, and he runs right into the guy. All he needs to do is you read that quarterback and you and you you weave, and when that ball, when that hand comes off, you take a look when you're breaking just to see what your angle needs to be on the entry, right? He's not even look, he's he's going like this, and and Willie Brown. RIP, God rest his soul, one of the greatest, the famer. That quarterback's not throwing it to you. Take a look at that fucking receiver. Get your angle. And then when you're getting close, take a peek. So bad eyes. Bad. That, that's the one thing is eyes are so critical. Eyes are so critical. And you ask any great player, you know, what's your what's what makes you such a great player? And everyone's probably going to say, oh, your, your speed and your size and your hands and a lot of it's going to be my eyes. I had good eyes. Eyes are so crucial. Yeah, no, you're right, Andy. Yeah, I mean, there's games where people don't give a fuck. That's why the NFL is so great, man. On third and two, um, which one was that? So now... Yeah, I mean, right here, last two games, which we won. First game by the Giants, we won significantly. And we beat a good New York Jets team. Jacobs uh, had an average in those two games of 26.5 rushes. Had a hundred average of 107 yards rushing and 4.0 yards per rush. In this game, in the going into the fourth quarter, 11 rushes. For 27 yards and 2.5 average per rush. So again, it just it validates my last point. You don't run a flea flicker when 
The running back only got the ball 11 times for 27 yards in the fourth. Come on. And even at that time, we were one of eight on third down. Can't win games. Can't win games. Well, and then and then the Dolphins, they in the fourth quarter, because they're usually up, right? They lead the NFL. They're averaging six yards per carry in the fourth quarter. Highest in 30 years for the Dolphins. There was a great second and 17, great throw and catch to Trey Trucker for 23 yards. Great, great, great. Oh, and they challenged it and we didn't get it. Fuck. Yep. Fuck. That was a that was a killer. That was a killer. Then third and 17. We get it to fourth and two. So it's fourth and two with 843 left. I I, I think on that fourth and two, kick the field goal with eight minutes left. I think we had three timeouts at that point. It's not spam. It's a link to Spotify to listen to it. You need to hear it. What do we? Oh, what is this? Um, I'm almost done here. Yeah, fourth and two with eight forty-three. Kick the field goal. Oh. This was a play I was talking about earlier where Morag didn't get that curl flat drop. He was too short. It was second and 15. And uh, Palmeo and Hobbs, you can see him communicate before the play. And um, Tyreek Hill comes across the formation. And Palmeo plays it perfect. Gets deep underneath. And you have Hobbs over top. And the only way to complete it was by catching it out of bounds. Great play. Great, 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 great play. On second and 15, and then on third and 15, the next play, that was a play where I said Paul Mile came across the field to make the tackle. Yeah, the backwards pass. I, the backwards pass, I don't understand. It was always, if, if that ball's on the ground, pick it up. Shit, you never know what could happen. Pick it up. Pick it up. The referees blew that one, too, because fucking um, – 16 should still be should still be running right now. Second second and six with 523. Renfro, what a fucking great run after catch. Where he hurdles the guy and still going, man. What a great fucking play. Great fucking play. There was a third and six where Aiden was sacked. There was no one open. Could he have gotten rid of it? I Probably. Uh, he didn't force anything. But then again, fourth and six. And since we didn't kick the field goal earlier, now we do have to fucking go for the touchdown. See, again, if we kick that field goal, I think you kick the field goal again here. Because the fourth down plays that we did, I didn't like them. I didn't like the calls. It seemed like we were confused. I mean, on fourth down, they're – Usually in offense, right, they, they call them their, their must-haves. And on defense, you study those. These are their must-have plays. These are the best fucking plays we got. And they should be plays that you practice over and over. You should be able to run those things blindfolded. But it seemed like we didn't – I didn't like the play calling. I didn't like it at all. Yeah, and I have here, you know, six points off three turnovers. Yeah. What did I say a couple of weeks or I think last week? Field goals don't win games. They don't. You need to fucking score. Field goals do not win games. They don't. They don't. But then again, with 210 left, right? 210, two third and six. Miami gets the first, game's over with. Great rush by Crosby in 51, coming on both sides. And even 95 was right there. Great fucking play. Which gives us a chance. Our defense gave us a chance. Our defense gave us a chance at the end. They gave us a chance all game. 
158, 92 yards to go. And, and there was that play where, where Adams, you know, Aiden kind of over, you know, I don't know if he overthrew him or not, but, you know, they said he was wide. Here's the deal. They they were playing that cover too, and you got to hit in this honey hole. You got to get it so you have enough air under it to get over the corner, but not too much air that where the safety can come make a play on it. So it's a very hard pass to complete, which he missed it to Devontae, but then on the third and five, he threw a great um, – I forgot who caught it, but we got the first down. He hit him in the honey hole with 42 seconds to go. Second and 10, 32 seconds, no timeouts. I don't, I don't like the call. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure why. Why do you run a, a a a jump ball to number 11 first of all when he's double coverage, especially on Ramsey's side? Fuck, throw it to the other side where Devontae is. But again, Miami plays that corner underneath, safety over top. It's hard to complete passes. But I don't think you need to throw that ball in that situation. I don't, I, that was – now, third down, fourth down, sure. But not on second down with 32 seconds to go. But here's the deal. Look at this. Think about this. We kick a field goal with eight minutes to go. This is so fucking perfect. I'm, I'm glad I wrote this shit down. So you kick a field goal with eight minutes to go, right? To be down by, what would that put us down by? Four? We get the ball back. You kick a field goal with three minutes to go to put us down by one. We get the ball back. I'm pretty sure we're in field goal range. We have a chance to win the game with a field goal instead of going for it because it's almost like going for two, then you're playing behind. Yeah, shit. Field goal, eight minutes. Field goal, three minutes. Field goal, 42 seconds. Because then instead of trying to score, we're just getting yards to get closer on that second down. We're not going for the end zone. We're we're just trying to line up for a game-winning field goal when you have a kicker who's 45 out of 45 within 40 yards. Super, he reminds me of Black Dan Campbell. I'm a Lions fan, and those guys respect the shit out of him. You'll be okay with AP. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. I'm so happy to see these former players. And, and I had I had the privilege of playing with Dan Campbell when I was with the Lions, and I had the privilege of playing with AP when I was with the Giants. Blue-collar guys, man. So um, I think we're going to be all right. Let me just look at. So I mean what shit. Let's see. Yeah, I mean they only had two touchdowns. The rest were field goals. Um, I just want to take a look. Let me see this. Let me see the schedule. The rest of the schedule. So here, so what? We're uh, we're five and six, right? Five and six. We got a okay, Chiefs, Vikings. At home, Chargers at home, then at the Chiefs, then at the Colts, and then home against the Broncos. So,
I'm going to say we we win the game next week at home. We beat the Vikings. We beat the Chargers. We lose at Kansas City. We beat the Colts. And we beat the Broncos. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That's five and one in the next six games. So that puts us at the best, I think the best, 10 and seven on the season. I think that's completely doable. Oh, I never, I never played for the Chiefs. I played Raiders, uh, Redskins, Commanders, uh, Giants, and Chiefs, Giants and Lions, and for Omaha Nighthawks, baby, in the UFL, motherfucker. Uh, Chiefs two losses, Vikings win, Chargers win, Colts win. I, yeah, I mean that's that's completely capable even with that that puts us at nine and eight let's put the chiefs win on an end unless something crazy happens in other games what is this the broncos won no 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 i'm saying when we play him at the end of the year so it's our last home game against the broncos we win that game All right, well, I want to say, uh, no, I didn't play for the Chiefs. No. Fuck the Chiefs. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I wanted to come in, be direct with my statistics, go over my stats. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Guys, we're going to be okay. Aiden's going to get better. AP is going to get better. Uh, the defense is coming around. We're getting a we're getting a a a, a um, an identity on defense. Offensively, we're going to come, man. You know, it it it, it takes time. It takes time. I, the plays are there. You know, I mean, our offensive line is bad. That's that's going to be tough. We need to get that running game going more. When we get away from that running game, we have trouble winning. Uh, but special teams are great. Punting field goals are great. Coverage is great. We're getting turnovers. That's a mindset. They're going to keep coming. Guys are stripping. Guys are getting interceptions. They're going to keep coming. Um, we have shit. One, two, three, four. Four home games and two away. So four of the six games we have left are at home. I, I think we definitely played better in Allegiant Stadium. And um, it'll be fun. I just know this. We're going to be in every game in the fourth quarter, and that's what you want. But uh, stay in there, guys. Keep fucking – stay positive. Stay positive. Positive thoughts. Posit don't don't be with these other people who are already, you know, fuck this and fuck that. Just – we're going to be okay. I appreciate everyone coming in here. Go Raiders.